maybe we can start off uh, by warming up a bit. And uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, very much a, a technical feature in our in our product. But uh, Turinge, could you introduce what is the famous public data browser? <laughs> sure, Henry. Yeah, uh, as Henry said, we're we decided to spend the first week of 2022 uh, actually building a feature together. And this is the first time we've done so. Um, we, of course, develop features, but it's, uh, it's rare that we, we bring the whole company together to actually work on, uh, on a single project for a whole week. So uh, it's been an interesting week. <laughs> it's been very busy. Um, and I'm actually super, super impressed by what the team has been able to put out in, uh, in just five days. So public data browser, I guess it, it helps to start with just what, what, how data usually comes into Clarify. So as Henry mentioned, it's a, it's a collaborative tool for working with time series data. And most of our customers work with machine data and data coming out of their uh, internal systems. And there's been this idea uh, in the company for a while that it'd be really cool if we could also bring in data that is publicly available um, to help companies build upon the data that they have internally and extend it with stuff like prices and like all of the stuff that is going on in, in, in the world around you um, that you might know is there, but you don't you don't have a good way of accessing it. So so that's the so the idea behind the public data browser. So what we've done is is to build a feature inside of Clarify where you can uh, import data uh, or you can access data um, which is shared in these data sets where our team has actually gone in and, and found interesting data that we think is uh, can be really useful for, for both companies and individuals. Um, and made it accessible in Clarify in a way where you don't have to go and integrate it. You don't have to go and find it. You don't have to go and figure out how some random API works or read documentation. You just press a button and it's available in your Clarify organization. That's a, that's a, a good intro. And the, the, the amount of public data and open data has been massively uh, increasing for the past 10, 15 years. I remember I, I did my first open data project, uh, I think it was 10 years ago. Uh, around some uh, trash analysis in in the city of uh, Helsinki, and 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 today, like with uh, pandemic and all, like we see time series graphs all the time, and, and data is coming more and more public for individuals, uh, but as well for uh, companies and organizations. And it's it's a good approach to have that public data available, uh, and then combining that uh with what you have inside your facilities in the four inside mm. the four walls of your manufacturing company or as well I inside the four walls of your your house and your uh home iot no, abso uh, systems absolutely and, uh, and w what we did in the beginning of the week was actually go out and looking for for publicly available data and and i mean there's so much of it uh but at the same time it can actually be kind of hard to to know where to look and to know how to get get access to it and, and also to just have it in a in a format and a, and a shape where you can actually start using it and get to the point where you're getting value out of your data, which is also kind of what we've seen with company data is that um, having the data somewhere is is better than, than not having it, but 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 having it in, in a good format and available for consumption is really when, when you're able to get value out of it. So so that's what we try to do with now then public data. Yeah, and I have to point out that there's so much talk also about being being data driven in, in the market and and then what you're pointing out is having data available. I mean, how can you be data driven without uh, having data available? Uh, so that's that's step one uh, for us in, in Clarify, but also in, in this project on having it um, uh, available in general. But if we dive a bit uh, deeper into it and, and with your mind, what, what would you say is the value of the public data browser uh, feature for uh, single players, uh, whether they are uh, like home IoT enthusiasts or single users uh, within a professional organization or in general for, let's say, a manufacturing company in, in Europe, for example? It's a good question. Um, what we often see with the data that you have internally is that it, it, it's, and this makes sense, I mean, the center around your company, but then companies don't really, uh, both individuals and companies don't exist in, in isolation. There's a whole world around you and there's there's lots of data from the world around you that might affect how your business is doing, mm. how much how sales are going, uh, or even like the, the price of, of the materials that you, uh, that you use. Um, and having, if you need to bring that data into your organization before you can start using it, we've seen so many times, it's such a, a hindrance and an obstacle that you need to overcome before you can start using it. So by bringing stuff like, for, for this example, we'll show in a bit, we've, we brought in electricity prices and electricity usage, 
Uh, but you could have other things like the price of gas or the number of cars uh, on a given road or like there's any kind of data that might be interesting for companies. And I think in general, most companies are really like the data that they have available is, is focused on, on the stuff that is internal to their company. Um, but a lot of them would also like uh, in general, I think, be able to, to get value from from the data that, that, that surrounds them. And there's also this uh, move or at least a, a, a gradual move to, to, to maybe being more open with the data that isn't so, um, so some kinds of data are of course private and, and, and needs to be kept internally. But I think there's also a good, good opportunity for sharing some of the data. For example, you might have local weather stations. I don't know if you've seen the, the net Atmo um, they paired with uh, uh, the Norwegian Meteorological Services yes. by sharing data from these weather stations that's all around to improve uh, to improve forecasts. And yes. I think there's there's definitely data that companies have access to th that other companies in the vicinity would be able to use um, to to improve their operations without it being uh, uh, so. It's of course, still like private data, but uh, but there's a lot of data that that, that could be open and uh, and where where more companies could. Could uh, could gain value from the same kind of data. Yes, a lot of lot of talk uh, around obviously about uh, data silos and and so on. But that, that's a good uh, addition that there is uh, silos around individuals. There's silos around departments. There's silos inside a company. But there's also silos to the uh, outside world. Uh, and and in some cases, it's very relevant that uh, those silos can be there for a purpose. Mm. But I believe that technology shouldn't be the limiting factor, like the individuals and the companies and the whole ecosystem should be able to share that data and give that access. And that's a, a big job for, uh, of course, the cultures of organizations, but also for technologies uh, such as Clarify. Absolutely. I was actually thinking maybe I'll, uh, I'll just show you what the public data set browser, uh, data set browser looks like. Um, so I've got Clarify open and I, I created this organization, which is entirely empty, uh, before this uh, this show, so we could uh, could have a clean slate to play around with. So, this is the main screen of Clarify. I'm going to go over to the administration panel <coughs> by pressing this button up in the right hand corner, and then pressing data sets. So, this is inside our administration panel. This panel is available to the creator of an organization or anyone who has access to to um, to, to control its settings. And what we've got here is uh, basically a page for browsing public data sets. I'm going to press the button here, and we you can see we actually have added quite a bit of data sets um, so far here. So we got on the top here, we got electricity transfers, system total loads, power price. I think we can uh, maybe put a bit more work into naming these in a, <laughs> in a sensible manner. But if we look at the power price data set, it's, it, that is the power prices for uh, for all of the different countries in, in Europe. Um, now, you're probably noticing there's 44 here, and uh, there, there aren't quite 44 uh, individual countries with power prices. So I don't know how much you know about uh, electricity markets, but I'm going to show you a picture here. Um, so this picture is, is just of Scandinavia, um, but it looks the same uh, further down in Europe. And that some countries are actually separated into these zones uh, where you set the price of power. So we call this electricity, or sorry, uh, we call them bidding zones. So it's a minor technical detail uh, that might be nice to know for the, the rest of the demos. You see Finland, you're... Uh, you're, uh, we seem more unified on this. Yeah, you uh, <laughs> you apparently settled on one price for the whole country. We uh, we chose to do five. Um, we'll we'll see later that a lot of them are often very similar, but there's some uh, some regions here where they aren't, and, and that's been a, a source of discussion in in especially in Norway uh, in the last I'd say five six months, probably going back, but uh, but a lot lately about these, uh, these zones and different prices and why the prices are different. So I thought today we'd actually take a look at that. Why do we have these zones and why is the price different between them? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. I'm going to take the power price data set and I'm just going to press add items from data set. What's going to happen is this data set has been created by our team. They've imported all of the different power electricity prices uh, for different countries in Europe or different uh, bidding zones and they've added data uh, to them for the last year and it's being continuously updated so we get with new prices uh, coming in so i'm going to press that button and it's going to be added to this organization because it's going to add 44 items 
So an item is what we call uh, one unique time series in Clarify. Pressing adding here, gonna go over to items and you're gonna see that we have a ton of power prices. So in order to make this, uh, this uh, demo work, I'm just gonna go out of this and I'm gonna create a timeline, which is what we call the visualizations in Clarify. So I'm gonna create a timeline. I'm gonna search up the prices in NO1 and NO4. And I'll show you the map afterwards to show you why specifically those two regions. <coughs> Actually, I think I might wanna change NO4 for NO3 and I'll, uh, NO3 is uh, where we are right now. So I'm gonna put them over each other notice it says power price power price i'm just going to name them nicely so we can see the difference and we're looking at that so what you'll notice right away is just no one has higher prices than no3 and that's been a source of discussion in, in a way for for quite a while mm -hmm. uh, both that it's very high but also the the reason why it's different inside of norway and if we look back at the map this has to do with transfer of power uh, mm -hmm. So there are these uh, much debated cables uh, going between the different regions that allow us to balance, uh, move power basically across regions in Norway, but it also allows us to sell power out of the country. And the reason you want to do that, I'm not going to get into the details of that debate, <laughs> but it's uh, it both has to do with capacity. Uh, and you might have, for example, wind power generation in, in one area, mm -hmm. which is of course varies over time and with the weather. And you might have other sources of energy like nuclear power or coal power or even hydroelectric dams, which are able to supply a more, more constant power supply. And so you can combine these different power sources in order to have a stable power supply. But mm -hmm. it, it requires you to be able to move power from one area to another. And the reason you can have stuff like this is that NO1 is connected to a region that has high prices, while NO3 you can see it's connected to NO1, but there's not enough capacity to move power in between the different regions in Norway in order for us to, to equalize the prices. Now, this is a lot more complicated than these this very basic details, um, but the beauty of Clarify is you can actually go in and you can start uh, looking at this for yourself. So I added the pricing um, data set, and I'll show you briefly another a bit more detailed data set, but you can go in Clarify today and you can add in all of these uh, different various data sets and you can build your own analysis. And the other thing which is, is nice here is that we can, um, I can include others in the discussion. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and add a title to this, uh, this timeline and I'm gonna add in a few more regions. So we're gonna look at the map again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in DK2 and SE3, which are connected to NO1. So we're gonna see that if we add in DK2 and SE3. What will happen if I drag this over? So you'll notice that they follow approximately the same pattern um, as NO1. So you can see here that when the price goes up, it goes up in one Norwegian zone, one Danish zone, and one Swedish zone. As these areas are, are interconnected, so the price will tend to average out between them because mm. you, you basically move power to the region which has high power prices, which averages it out. And you can see NO3, uh, which isn't connected, which is incidentally where we are. Uh, <laughs> so lucky for us, uh, it doesn't go quite as high because uh, there's not the market powers driving it high. So if I wanted to share this with you, either just to uh, to tell you to, to not uh, charge your electric car tomorrow, uh, or if I wanted to ask you a question about uh, why is the price in, in DK2 dropping here, for example, um, what I can do is I can uh, go ahead and share this timeline with Henry. I'll just allow you to view the data. I don't want you to. That's the with my classic setup. I always get the viewing licenses yeah. right now. <laughs> you always create that type one-sided silo towards me. I uh, never get to edit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't like people uh, <laughs> moving my data sources. <laughs> <laughs> and I can go in here, here and I can add a comment. So uh, I'll go in and add a comment here and say, uh, Lucky for us that we aren't in. I'm gonna tag one of the data sources. I'm gonna tag NO1, which is high prices. Gonna tag you as well so you get a notification. And, and now I'm just playing, but the, the point here is that you can you can use this to build a lot of uh, knowledge about the data that's coming in because 
as you see the prices go up and they go down and, and if i added in the consumption data you'd see it like it, it, it moves in in all kinds of ways um but what's interesting is when you start looking at why does it move the way it does are there correlations between things what's connected what's not and um, i know a bit about the electricity market but we could also bring in someone who knew a lot more uh, who'd be able to give us more context in, into what's happening so i'm gonna just briefly switch over to a pre-built timeline for the german yeah, and i guess the 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 normal setup of, of this sharing uh would have been uh, probably a, a screenshot and a email thread and asking for that uh right the expert and and now all i got was or not all i got i got a specific notification that takes me directly uh to the data no, absolutely that's a, that's a very good point uh because i mean people have, have been sharing data uh, obviously mm -hmm. before but, but it's very often in that screenshot email uh, type exchange and, and and that might work at the time uh, but you don't preserve that knowledge i mean it's, it's preserved somewhere in your email inbox uh, yes. but it's not available to someone else in your company uh, if you leave the company it's, it's maybe not available at all um, and even for you uh, i don't know how your in in sorry email inbox looks <laughs> but mine isn't uh, it's not very neatly organized um, so I'm, I'm just going to show you one example here where we have an actual, I, I have something that I know happened in the world and, and I'm going to add a, I'm going to open a timeline. So this is a timeline of the German electricity production. And you can see it's, uh, this timeline is private to me. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share it with actually everyone in, uh, in my company. I still want them to have your permissions. Okay. So German electricity market now. There's a lot of things that happens here, but there's one thing in particular where I actually know what happened. So if you look at this second uh, visualization here, you can see I put in nuclear and wind power. And if we zoom out, you can keep zooming out and you can look at it some months before, you'll see that the nuclear production in Germany has been relatively constant. And I don't know what happened every time this dropped, but I'm going to guess it's a nuclear power plant that shut down, maybe for maintenance, maybe something else i don't really know again we could ask someone that that does but i know what happened on the 31st of december in 2021 which was that germany turned off three of their six nuclear uh, power plants so what we can do now is i can zoom in on this and you can see you can actually see it happening uh, you can see the production from nuclear in germany dropping from almost 7000 megawatts uh, down to three now how are they going to make up the difference so i don't know yet uh, and uh, what we can do now is with this data set we can actually monitor it so in two weeks in a month we can actually see okay over time how are they making up the difference is being imported are they building out more wind power we can actually take a look at that and and uh, and just analyze how it's uh, how it's moving so i'm going to go ahead and add a comment here just so the rest of the company knows because i don't know how how many paid attention to this i'm gonna put it at a drop here on the very first here first of december add a comment So just adding that uh, that to the to the discussion, and then we'll see if someone else from the company picks this up and and adds some more context. Maybe someone has an article they can link to, or someone has more context about why it happened, or even plans for how they're gonna make it up. So now you're also uh, announcing your personal uh, observation scheme that you're gonna be observing this uh, observing this. Uh, data stream for quite a while and that uh, gives an opportunity for example for a data science team to pick up on that thread and, and you're adding human context to uh, to the data as you go and from a uh, point that you were being proactive about uh, doing something with the data that has been made available for you no absolutely and that's a lot of times what happens in in our company but also others is that you see these uh, said these discussions that spark naturally uh, where I might ask, for example, if two values are, are correlated um, or, or, or a set of variables. And it might be hard for me to answer and it might be hard for you to answer, but we have a team of data scientists who might be able to actually do something with it and, and come back with an answer. And that, that happens regularly. They ask a question about what happened here. And then someone with more knowledge of the process is able to contribute it. Or even as, as I said, like our analysts are able to go into that and, and give me a, 
a better explanation than what I can can guess at. Yes, which is um, yeah, w really the idea behind Clarify is to spark these discussions and to preserve the result of them, so that you you um, over time you build this this knowledge into into your organization. And as you can see here, the data is, is continuously coming in. Uh, so I can see the prices for the German market is updated. I mean, they're set a day in advance, so we can keep seeing it um, it update. And the other um, data here as well, the the production data and the transfer of power between lands, it's, it's, it's continuously updated. All right, and, and so for uh, there's uh, obviously uh, existing users who uh, after today have the opportunity to add uh, public data to their uh, data sets, uh, their uh, existing timelines, but also for uh, people watching this uh, event as well as our, our future new users, uh, they have the opportunity to uh, sign up to Clarify onto our, uh, this is a free plan, uh, by the way, so you can uh, get started. And, and this, uh, which data sets will actually be uh, available at the first go uh, while we develop more public data sets? Sure. I'm going to swipe over and we can take a look at it. So as you said, the, the product is uh, there's a free plan available, and and adding public data sets is is an option that you, that you have there. Um, if we go in and look at the public data sets, there's <coughs> to start with we have four uh, data sets related to uh, power production in in Europe. Um, they're about uh, the types of power being produced. So when solar, uh, we have the amount of power being transferred between different countries. We have the prices. And we have the total load uh, for different countries. You can see how much power, for example, is being used in Norway. And it's, been, it's actually been kind of interesting looking at, uh, I mean, I guess it's based on your definition of interesting, but I'm, I find it really, really curious to look at the power consumption data for Norway. Um, and you can contrast it with, for example, the, how cold it's been outside, but also stuff like events that happen. You can, I, I think you can spot that a lot of people were at their home offices um, in January, at least, uh, if you look at my my personal power consumption, so that's very that's very <laughs> that's very visible. Uh, oh, but it is, of, of course, uh, exciting and relevant in the smallest scale. It's 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 you uh, thinking about when are you uh, charging your car and, and comparing that uh, within Clarify and in a larger scale. It's it's a whole uh, industrial company that uh, can combine the data sets and use the publicly available data in, in one in one tool and. Uh, the savings are significant for uh, for each each party, but uh, yeah. the scale is just different. No, no, I'm, it's, uh, I totally agree. It's it's both interesting as a as a person as a, and as a company. So there's uh, there's power prices, and we added in some currencies as well, uh, both because it's uh, it's interesting on its own, but also to allow people um, if you added in the power prices and the currency. So the power prices in, in Clarify today are, and that's how they're they're traded uh, in euros. So if you want to convert them to Norwegian kroner, you need a uh, the currency at the at the point, so you can combine those two data sets and use uh, a feature in, in Clarify. We won't cover it today, but it's called calculated items, where you can actually do calculations in Clarify, much like in an Excel spreadsheet, uh, only with time series data. Which is, at least I think it's it's uh, it's a pretty cool feature, and you can do a lot of uh, a lot of useful stuff with it. In addition, we have some data that that might just be most interesting for the Norwegians uh, listening, and we have some data from um, NVE, uh, which monitors the say the capacity uh, of or the, f the level of um, water in Norwegian reservoirs uh, for uh, for hydroelectric dams um, so you can see how much water is, is, is being stored and, and how that's being uh, used and you can compare it with the prices if you think uh, they're uh, they're optimizing for for pricing um, there are also some uh, at the bottom here called demo data, which is the same data sets. When you sign up for Clarify, you get asked if you want to add a, or actually you have to choose one of four demo data sets. So those are now available. So if you went ahead and, and chose the mystery box data set, where you're really curious what's in the aquaculture one, you can now add in that uh, as well. Um, yeah, and that's the ones we've added so far. Uh, we we started the week looking for for open data, and, and as I said, there is a lot. Um, so so hopefully we'll we we'll just keep adding uh, more interesting data sets to this uh, to this browser. Yes, that's a, a great uh, intro, and as you said, it's is what we managed to do in in five days, yeah. and uh, I'd say we managed to do uh, quite a lot uh, from uh, zero. Uh, now that we have the the feature public data browser uh, available. There is good relevant uh, data already today for 
our uh, European uh, users uh, and obviously international as well can access that uh, European data, but we'll, we'll be adding more uh, public data sets uh, to clarify and, and, and of course uh, the, the real magic happens when you bring your own uh, data in, when you integrate your own uh, data sources. But I, I do believe that uh, in addition to the demo sets that we have, these uh, public uh, uh, data sets such as energy prices and, and consumption will uh, kind of shorten the, the time to value that you, you find from, from mm. clarifiers. Like all the public data sets that we talked about uh, early in this event, like there's every day you see some type of, of graph uh, in the media, but uh, the difference is that they're quite often uh, static uh, sets. You, if you're a curious mind, like I know that you are, <laughs> that you really want to zoom in and zoom out and, uh, and look 12 months bit back and, and then come back to what it is actually in within this minute and this, this hour, uh, that's, that's again a great uh, sweet spot to maybe sign up to, to clarify and have a look at these uh, energy data sets and, and see what this uh, more dynamic uh, view can mm. uh, give you. Absolutely. Uh, every time I see a static graph, I want to <laughs> I want to zoom into it or, or, or add more data to it. Uh, I mean, it's uh, viewing a single time series static can, can tell you some things. Uh, but I do think it's like really when you're, you're able to move in and out, for example, looking at, well, I guess all of us has been looking at COVID data. I don't think anyone has I think a lot of people were introduced to time series data uh, and to these kinds of charts with COVID, uh, which is at least one good thing uh, coming <laughs> out of it. Uh, but it's uh, always when you're looking at like the number of, uh, of new infections or uh, vaccinated, I always want to zoom out to see like, oh, find like that's for these six weeks, but what does it look like in the context of a year? Um, and with Clarify for all kinds of data, you're able to do that. You can move in and out in, in, in time, which I, Personally, I uh, find really valuable, uh, but that's maybe yeah. a given as I'm working yeah, with this. Yeah, right. a long time ago, uh, a map was a great way to view your own country or the whole globe. And then today you, you want to zoom into your mm. street and, and have some uh, comments going on, uh, like in, in Google Maps or, or so. So that's the same that's happening for, uh, for time series data um, as well. Um, looking at the time, uh, it's been flying. Uh, nice to have you here today, touring it to our studio. And this is also our uh, first uh, internal uh, feature launch. I'm sure we'll be uh, doing more of these uh, now with our uh, great uh, Clarify studio. And before we uh, finish, obviously, thanks uh, everyone uh, joining live today, as well as the, the enthusiasts looking at the, the recording. I'd like to remind that the January 19th, I will have the great Luke Small uh, across the Atlantic join me uh, with the topic of calling BS on IIoT marketing. Uh, and that's a provocative, uh, the title, but we'll have some uh, good, good arguments from, from Luke on uh, what's happening in the, in the world of IIoT and is, is marketing to blame for, for all the hype and <laughs> uh, what's behind that. But Sounds interesting. I'll make sure to watch that. All right. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a wrap for uh, for today, and I wish everyone uh, a nice weekend and a great day uh, from here on out. See you guys later. Bye bye. Good job. Good job. You too. <laughs>